Hi guys, welcome to my affordable watch collection. My name is Aviv and today I'm going to share with you my experience of receiving a malfunctioning watch from AliExpress. This Felida SP01, a homage to the iconic Omega Speedmaster. I'm going to show you the watch and what's wrong with it and also show you what to do when something goes wrong with your AliExpress order and how I got a full refund for this watch. I bought this watch on sale on AliExpress Brands Shopping Week and paid after all the discounts and coupons just under 140 US dollars for it. Felida is a brand that popped up on AliExpress not so long ago and seems to be rapidly building a reputation for making and selling some good quality homage watches. The Speedmaster Homage has two colorways to choose from, this black one and another one with a red and white checkered dial, homaging the Omega Tin Tin dial. The width of the case is 40 mm, its thickness is a touch over 14 mm, including the protruding domed crystal, the distance between the lugs is 20 mm, lug tip to lug tip is 48.5 but the bracelet's end links protrude quite a bit beyond that and the watch weighs 170 grams. It has a rather unusual water resistance rating of 70 meters which I guess is better than having 50 meters of water resistance but not as good as 100 meters. The dial is imitating the Speedmaster Moonwatch dial so we have a matte black dial with white printings on it, a mini track, three sub dials, the one at the three o'clock counts the minutes for the chronograph, the one at the nine o'clock is the running second sub dial, and the one at the six o'clock position mimics the hour hand for some reason. We have applied and loomed baton indices, Felida chronograph mechanical printed in white and red under the 12 o'clock marker, and the tachymeter design on the aluminum bezel insert. The hands are all white pencil hands and the hour and minute hands are loomed. The watch sports a domed top hat sapphire crystal that looks very cool and gives a beautiful distortion. The case is made of 316L stainless steel and it too is very nicely executed. It has two pushers to activate the chronograph at the 2 and 4 o'clock positions and the crown at the 3 o'clock position. Overall, a very nice design, very well executed. It just might be the nicest Speedmaster homage out there today. We have a display case back showing off the Siegel ST19 mechanical chronograph movement. A movement that is being used as a go-to movement by many brands who seek an affordable and reliable mechanical chronograph, just like the NH35 is being used as a go-to affordable and reliable automatic movement. It has 20 joules, it beats at 21,600 BPH, and it has 42 hours of power reserve. It is also very beautiful and fun to look at. The bracelet is pretty good, even though not perfect. It too is constructed of 316L stainless steel. It has solid links and solid end links. A milled clasp with diver's extension for some reason. It is a three links bracelet that features a mixture of brushed and polished finishes. Let's do a quick wrist shot here. Not a bad look, right? So overall, a killer watch, great specs for the money, and I was really ready for it to be awesome and to enjoy it. So what's wrong with it? Well, the movement isn't working properly. When I engage the chronograph by pushing the top pusher, the chronograph seconds hand starts moving all right. But when I stop it by pressing the same pusher again, and try to reset it, it doesn't go back to its zero position at the 12 o'clock, 
but rather advances half a second each time I reset it. See where it stopped now? And when it stops when I reset the chronograph again. This sucks. It sucks especially because other than that issue, it's a pretty awesome watch. And while this is an easy fix on a quartz chronograph, I have no way of fixing it on this mechanical one without taking it to a watchmaker and that will probably cost me more than I paid for the watch itself. What's really annoying is that this is a quality control issue that could have been easily avoided by actually running a QC test. So what do you do when something like this happens? What do you do when you get a faulty item from AliExpress? or basically anything that doesn't match the item's description. The first and maybe most important thing is that you act fast. When you get any item from AliExpress, examine it first as you get it or get home from the post office with it. Make sure it does what it's supposed to do and that it works properly. Check to see if there's any kind of damage on it. And if you do find anything, take pictures of it and the video showing exactly what is wrong. This will later serve as evidence that you got a bad item. Then send the seller a message about it immediately. Don't sit on it. Do it immediately as you find the damage or malfunction. This way the seller cannot claim that the product was damaged by you not using it properly. The seller will then tell you what you need to do. Most times they will just tell you to open a dispute and file for a refund. And that's very easy to do via the AliExpress app or website. You will have to describe what was wrong with the item, both by checking some boxes on the open dispute page and to describe it in your own words, in English only. I find it best to just say the truth about what is wrong, whether it's a bad product or a product that never arrived. And you should also say that the seller told you to open a dispute to get a refund. Add photo evidence to the dispute if you have any, the photos you took of the bad item, and even a screenshot of your conversation with the seller. You then have to wait for a dispute resolution from AliExpress. It can take anything between a couple of minutes and a couple of days. And in 99% of the cases, if your claim is justified, you will receive a refund within a couple of days. To this day, even after buying hundreds of different items from AliExpress over the years and having quite a few issues with bad items or items that never showed up, I was granted a refund every single time I filed for one. Keep in mind that even if the seller doesn't agree to refund your money, you can still open a dispute and AliExpress will decide if your claim is justified. Again, I always get my refunds when they are in order. The case with this watch is a bit different. Because it's a pricier item, I had to send it back to the seller. Thankfully, it didn't cost me anything but the inconvenience of actually going to the agency and sending the package. You'll notice that on the product page, it says free return. When I opened the dispute to get a refund on this watch, AliExpress told me, okay, you'll get your refund, but you have two weeks to send the watch back. You have to accept this term and then you get a shipping label you need to print out and put on your parcel. You package the watch back again. That's by the way why you should always keep the box the watch came with, at least until you see everything is okay. Put the label on it and go ship it. I got a list of agencies who are working with AliExpress free return and had to choose one to go to. I went there with the parcel ready to be shipped and they were already waiting for me and knew I was supposed to come with an AliExpress free return package. 
the address on the shipping label AliExpress provided me wasn't in China. It was of the AliExpress headquarters in my own country. So the package got there very quickly. After the warehouse acknowledged receiving the watch, I was granted a full refund. So besides not having the watch I wanted and having to waste a little time with the refund process, there was no harm done. And I even got to film this video before sending the watch back. Do I still recommend this watch? Well, oddly enough, yes, I do. It really is a nice watch and these kinds of QC issues can happen with any watch or even any product we buy on AliExpress. This is the flip side of the commodity being that affordable. These Chinese manufacturers have to cut corners in order to keep the cost down for us consumers, but you can rest assured from my experience that you are covered by AliExpress and if anything goes wrong, whether it be a malfunction in watch or a watch that got lost in the mail system, you will be compensated. If you are still interested in this watch, I am going to leave a link for it in the description of this video. Hopefully you will get a function in one if you are like any other reviewer here on YouTube but me. I will also leave some links for some straps I really like on AliExpress. Definitely check those out as well and a link to the Tintin version of this watch. These will all be affiliate links that will not cost you any extra money if you choose to use them, but will help the channel out with a small commission. If you liked this video and found it helpful in any way, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my affordable watch collection for more affordable watches related content. You can also follow me on Instagram and get to know me and my collection a little bit better get all the news about the channel and connect with me on a more personal level. Before you go, here are a couple more videos you might enjoy. Feel free to check them out. I want to thank you all very much for watching and I will see you next time.